What is it that leads us to react in emotional ways in response to, say, a question or a challenge? What is it that can lead us to behave with anger, almost threatening behavior, in response to, say, a political dialogue? A reaction filled with emotion and rage within the context of an ordinary exchange around policy. As we know, it's what characterizes Donald Trump. Well, as with a lot of things in psychology, the answer goes back into childhood. The things that happen in childhood, there are ways that our brain develops in childhood that can lead us to get triggered in this way and to react in this way. Ways that lead us to react with emotion rather than rational and considered thought. And what we can understand if we look back at childhood is the way in which certain behaviors actually impact our brain and the way it's shaped and the way it works. And I'm going to talk a little about that in this video. And I particularly want to thank one of the subscribers to the channel, Sol Davidson, who actually suggested it to me and reminded me that some of this underlying neurobiology might be of interest to people who watch the channel. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper and talk not just about the childhood experiences, which I've done before, that can provoke these kind of behaviors, but also about the biology underneath it. I'm going to do that just after a quick word about the channel. I hope you're enjoying the video. As a psychiatrist who's fascinated by the worlds of politics and economics and philosophy, I love making these videos. And if you'd like to see more of them, then please do like and subscribe and comment in this video. What you'll find is that there's a beautiful community growing up around this channel. We're all going through a national and international trauma right now because of what's happening and where our leaders are taking us. And in this channel, you'll find people honestly sharing their situation and their distress and other people responding with kindness, empathy and compassion. So please join this wonderful community that we're forming. Join in the comments and the dialogue that's happening. So in childhood, we're in a very vulnerable state. We can easily perceive things to be existential threats because in a sense, they more easily are. We are in a form of dependence, deep dependence on our adults and our caregivers without whom we could literally not survive. So threats from them can produce very large responses in the brain because the brain is trying to prime us to stay alive. And a big part of this process is a part of the brain called the amygdala. It's a little area just above the spinal cord. And what happens when the amygdala is triggered is that it triggers the fight flight response. So in response to a threat, it then does two things. The first thing it does is it sort of disconnects our prefrontal cortex. That's the front part of our brain that is responsible for rational thought and considered judgment for calibrating our behaviors. It's a kind of filter that enables us to react more calmly, maturely, and with more consideration. Now that is kind of disconnected when the amygdala feels threatened. And what it then does is it activates something called the HPA axis, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, to do a range of things. Chief among them is the release of two important hormones, adrenaline and cortisol. They then enable us to engage in a sort of fight flight response, trying to protect ourselves. And emotionally that translates often into anger, fury, rage, domination, getting ready to fight someone, or withdrawal and apathy, trying to stay away. So trauma in childhood, whether due to the behavior of parents or others around us, which lead us to feel threatened, lead us to feel afraid, can lead to the amygdala becoming triggered, disconnecting the prefrontal cortex for a bit, and engaging in this sort of emotional flight fright response. Now, if that happens repeatedly in childhood, over and over again, then the amygdala can become hypersensitive and thus overactive. So it very easily starts reacting to things in its environment as if they're perceived existential threats. Quickly becoming angry, quickly becoming aggressive, quickly trying to dominate and instill fear in others, or withdrawing and becoming apathetic. This can happen, as I say, just in response, for example, to a question about policy. Or a regular challenge. I don't think you're doing a good job, or I don't think you're the best leader there is. These kind of challenges most people can respond to rationally, can give an argument about, or just brush off. But if you have a hypersensitive amygdala caused by trauma in your childhood, then those responses are not available to you anymore because what the amygdala is doing is essentially disconnecting those parts of your brain that would respond in that way, and instead jumping at you in a way that would effectively scare you off. And as I say, I'm sure you're going to be familiar with this response by now because we see it all around us. There's actually been studies that show that the size and the reactivity of the amygdala is higher in people who tend to be right-wing. 
So again, there's a hint of correlation there between the trauma, the neurobiology that then forms from the trauma and the response to challenges in adult life. This phenomenon is known, as I mentioned, as amygdala hijack. But in a sense, what's happening to us now around the globe is that we're all being hijacked by the amygdalas of a relatively small number of people. Now, as I've said before in this channel, none of this is irreversible. There is no brain structure or type that is set in stone. There's something called neuroplasticity. All of these things can change. And when it comes to the political discourse, that change is essential. But it won't occur by us continuing in the current polarised political system that we have, where you have one group of people challenging the other group of people, the other group of people feeling threatened and behaving in this sort of extraordinary way and causing, throwing up extraordinary leaders and causing extraordinary policies to be enacted as a result. It does involve creating a system that involves actual political discourse early on, participation of all people. And through having regular dialogues with each other, we can actually, essentially, change each other's brains. But that doesn't mean you as an individual now going off into a red state somewhere and trying to convince somebody else. It doesn't involve any of that. It doesn't mean that. It actually means a different kind of political system where people are required to take responsibility themselves to help to make decisions, not just leave it to lawmakers to craft legislation, but for all of us to debate legislation, hearing evidence from experts and making decisions together. If people come together with the responsibility of making decisions, not with the aim of changing each other's minds, but with the responsibility of making decisions together, then minds can be focused because there's a lot riding on it. It's not just a tit for tat, it's not just an argument. And so when we are all seriously in the business of taking responsibility for government policy, then we have to start to really hear each other and then things start to change. And that's the only way we can unpick this cycle that we're in now because if we just think that all we need to do is elect a different leader next time, someone a bit more progressive and sensible and rational. The whole population that remains ready to throw up a Trump in this way will do it again. So it's really essential, understanding what we do, to not just advocate the change of leader, but advocate a change of system too. Because as I've described in this video, the problems we have, well, they're not just surface level, they're very, very deep. And so the solutions and the way out has to involve a lot more depth too. I hope you liked the video. I hope you also can join me with more of my content that I'm aiming to make over the coming months and years. You see, this time around, what we're experiencing in this administration is a global trauma and the people going through it have been asking, how can we support ourselves? How can we learn and grow and share together through this process? So I've started to write a series of eBooks. That's together with my whole team, once a month, we're gonna produce an eBook to help us understand better the psychology of the people around us and the systems we're in, as well as our own psychology too, to help us navigate this increasingly confusing and disorientating world we find ourselves in. You'll be able to find those books on russellsbooks.com. That's russellsbooks.com. As soon as you go there, you'll be able to see the growing catalogue of books and hopefully um, buy any of them at any point. In addition, I hope you can subscribe to my e-newsletter. See, there's a link in the description uh, of this video and also the description of the channel. And if you go there, you'll be able to fill out a form. Once you've completed the form, uh, you'll then be able to get subscribed to my e-newsletter. And that way you can always be kept up to date about the content I'm producing. You see, the fact is that this platform, as well as all platforms, are owned by a very small number of oligarchs. And at any point, they might decide to shut down a channel like this. And if they do that, then, well, it's going to be hard for us to keep connecting. So if you sign up for my e-newsletter, that way you'll be able to make sure that you'll be informed about my content wherever it's delivered and wherever it lands. Finally, I hope you might also consider becoming a member of the channel. If you do, you'll get these ebooks for free every month. So all the ebooks I produce go free to my members who join the channel every month. Also, you can get priority response to comments, and there's also a members-only chat page for higher-level members that we engage in regularly to sort of learn, share, and support one another. As I say, this is a difficult time, it's a traumatic time in history, so many of us need support from each other. I'm hoping each of these things can help all of us create a better tomorrow together. Thank you.